Hello and welcome to Learn Java with LearnEasy Tutorial. In this video, we will learn basic concepts of object-oriented programming. Java uses object-oriented programming concepts. In our previous video, we saw two programming paradigms. The procedural approach, which gives emphasis to the order in which the instructions are executed, and functional approach that gives emphasis to the data being executed. The object-oriented programming approach emphasizes the security of the data and relates to real-life entities. Now let's have a look at its features. We will learn the meaning of these features with the help of real-life entities. The first feature we are going to see is data hiding. This is realized with the help of concepts, classes, and objects. Whatever data or attributes which a programmer will be using along with the set of instructions that will be using these data for a certain task are enclosed or bundled securely inside the entity class. Whenever a user wants to access this data, or wants to perform a particular task, an instance of the class is created. This is known as an object. Multiple instances of a class can be created. Each object receives a copy of these attributes and behaviors, but the data of one object cannot be directly accessed by another object. This is how data hiding and security of data are being realized. Let's see how we can relate this to a real-life entity phone. The class phone I'm using here has the attributes make, price, camera, and storage capacity. The member functions I'm going to include here are video calling, audio calling, texting, browsing, and notification. Now if we create two objects for this class, iPhone 11 and Samsung Galaxy S10, each of these objects receive a copy of attributes and behaviors of the class phone. Can the person using iPhone directly access the camera of Samsung S10? No, right? But when a video call is made, the camera can be accessed if the permission is granted. That is, object 1 can access the attribute camera through the behavior video call and only if there is permission to do so. This makes the camera secure and hidden from the outside world. So this is how data hiding is done with help of classes and objects. We said the data and functions are bound together inside the class. This feature is known as data encapsulation. Suppose you make a call. There are so many actions that take place in the background. The signals are transmitted to a nearby tower. The tower then routes the call to an appropriate network. And after many rerouting, the call reaches the user. But we are not aware of all these happenings. This feature is known as data abstraction. That is, the user is provided only with essential features without giving all the background details. Next feature we are going to see is inheritance. Inheritance is the property by which one class can inherit the feature of another class. For example, the phone class can have subclasses like cordless phone and mobile phone. Suppose the phone class has attributes make, price, microphone, dial pad, speaker and function calling. The cordless phone and mobile phone will also receive these attributes and behaviors. They will also have their own additional attributes and behaviors which will differentiate them from each other. Polymorphism is a property by which the same data or function can be used in multiple ways. Consider the attribute camera. It can be used to take a photo or video. Consider the behavior notification. We receive notification when we get a text, call, email, etc. Right? So the same data or the same function can be used in multiple ways. This feature is known as polymorphism. 
Please follow the link in the description below to find notes on this topic. That's all for now. In our next video, we will learn the basic structure of a Java program. If you like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thank you. Bye-bye. Happy learning.